you know, there's all these stories about, you know, guys over in Macedonia who are running these fake news sites. Number 24 is Content Farms in Macedonia. Vidite ako se napravi greška, ta ki bide kobna, nema vraćanja nazad. So, Europe need to to remain more sexy pin sexy pull lady in the world. Ajde majkata. Gospodje čuva Macedonija i njezinite građani. Tragedy struck Macedonia on September 8th, Macedonia's Independence Day, in what should have been a joyous celebration. Instead, 15 citizens were killed and another 11 were seriously injured in a fire that raced through a makeshift COVID hospital in Tetovo. The fast-moving fire, which burned rapidly through the flammable materials of the building, took the lives of individuals ranging in age from 20 to 79. While in all likelihood an accident, questions have arisen as to the procurement process. The hospitals were built through a less-than-transparent tender won by a company owned by former Deputy Prime Minister Kocho Angushev. Under intense public pressure, Health Minister Vinko Filipce and his deputy, Ilir Hassani, offered to resign. But their resignations have yet to be accepted by Prime Minister Zoran Zaev, who says, we must wait for an independent investigation to be completed. Left unsaid is the fact that Zaev sees Filipce as an asset in the upcoming October 17 local elections. We'll discuss all of this and much more on this episode of the Macedonian Content Farmers Podcast. I'm Jason Vico, coming to you from the foot of the Catalina Mountains in Oro Valley, Arizona. And this is Svetin Shalimanov in Skopje, Macedonia. The last time we recorded, Svetin, and we're recording today on the uh, 17th of September, September. Friday, US, U.S. Constitution Day, by the way. Uh, mm-hmm. The last time we recorded was before Independence Day, Macedonia's 30th Independence Day. 30th Independence Day on, mm-hmm. as a modern-day nation-state, Macedonia is an ancient country with an ancient people, but as a modern nation-state, modern-day nation-state, September 8, Macedonia celebrated independence, and it ended with this horrific fire. I think most of our listeners already know about this mm-hmm. uh, fire, which which went through the, it's, again, I said makeshift in the monologue, it's a uh, modular hospital that was set up, and there's, what, 19 of them around the country, I think? Yeah, 19. Uh, in every general hospital, in every city, larger city, there is a, a modular uh, clinic, like a spillover uh, capacity, and also uh, an important one in Skopje next to the infectious uh, clinic. So there, they couldn't accommodate everybody in the infectious clinic, so they put this next to it to like provide extra room. Sure, makes makes perfect sense. Mm-hmm. Countries around the world have been doing that, setting up you know, field hospitals, for lack of a better word, things like that, uh, you know, as we've gone through this this, uh, this virus imported from the Chinese Communist Party for the past almost 20 months. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so these hospitals around the country, this one, however, caught on fire, and there's an investigation. I believe that the Germans are sending an expert team. I don't know if they've arrived yet or not. Oh, yeah, they're um, here. They're here now. Okay, good. Uh, but lots of, uh, you know, questions about uh, the oxygen tanks and uh, the defibrillators, I believe, making a spark and things like that, of course. And anything could happen. And again, as I mentioned, in all likelihood, it was an accident, I'm sure. Yeah, but but when accidents happen, terrible accidents like this, disasters, uh, natural or, you know, hurricanes, earthquakes, things like that, or, or, or things like this, uh, people demand accountability. And... Uh, People need to resign for moral reasons. I believe there was a at least one doctor at the hospital that did resign. Is that is that right? Uh, they had uh, like a few uh, managers of the hospital resigned. And, uh, I think mm-hmm. one of them, one of uh, one of them, his resignation is accepted. But mm-hmm. the uh, important one is Vinko Filipce, his deputy from Dui also resigned, and uh, mm-hmm. Zaev is not accepting these resignations. He is trying to delay until people forget about this, start talking about something else. Uh, and, you know, he's using this German investigation to say, listen, we need a more mm. complete, more thorough investigation. That's why I can't accept their resignations yet. We have to wait. And they're being, you know, they're trying to be aggressive, both Philip and Zaf, and trying to fight now uh, the protests and the calls for their resignation after initially hiding practically from the public for a few days and trying to, you know, assess... What's going to happen with them? Right. 
And as I mentioned again in the monologue, we have the local elections coming up a month from today, actually, October 17th. Oh, yeah. Yep. Uh, interesting. And uh, although that'll be a Sunday, elections are always held on Sunday in Europe, which is always funny for us Americans. But um, you've, you've, Philip J. is an important asset to Zayev. He's popular within the ranks of citizen. Why, I don't know. Let's be honest. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but but Zayev needs him, and for him to actually accept his resignation, yeah, I'll, I'll give I'll give Philip J. points for tendering his resignation. Although, I'm, I'm sure it, it was, was forced. part of a. Sorry. It was forced. He did yeah. it on the first yeah. day. He had to yeah. do it on the second attempt. Good good point, and and it could all be Kabuki theater, you know. Yeah. He, you know, with a wink and a nod, he submits his resignation, and with a wink and a nod, Zayev says. Well, we'll have to wait and see. And then, as you said earlier, he's waiting. Zayev is waiting for the news cycle to move on, just like Biden here is waiting yep. for the news cycle to move on about Afghanistan. It already has. You know, there's so many other things going on. Uh, so many other disasters going on. Yep. Uh, and, and that is what Zayev is hoping. But as we were talking just before we started recording, it looks like there's more protests going on in Tetovo, calling for the resignation of Teut Arifi, the mayor, uh, the council, etc. And it, appears i saw one video of police chasing what looked to be a press crew from today mm -hmm. and it looks like it's getting a little bit more dodgy dicey yeah yeah i mean uh tito is largely obedient he had a, a huge wave of corona in tito and gusti were two neighboring cities because summer is the season when all the albanian immigrant workers come back to pick up their wives i mean to Choose a wife, to, you know, hold weddings. <laughs> pick up the, you have to be careful. You said pick up their wives. <laughs> yeah, yeah, seriously. I mean, they have marriages, and yeah. uh, uh, it's a one long party for a few months. And obviously, mm -hmm. uh, June and July, there was no. Uh, the law doesn't often apply to these parts of the country, and there was no restrictions mm -hmm. when when this was going on for limiting the size of weddings of parties, etc. And the government kept the borders open. Deliberately, because this also brings a lot of money and you can't stand in the way of the important Albanian coalition partners in the government. So we had a huge wave after having almost no cases in June and July. Suddenly, the, in mid-August, the situation suddenly became as bad as it was in April, the worst month so far. Mm. So the hospitals were over full, over full filling there. They had to fill the... Um, the <coughs> these uh, container hospitals as well. As a result, most of the victims are Albanian, and uh, this is a huge political issue now between the Albanian parties here and for Zayev, who depends on the Albanian vote. And, sure. uh, you know, uh, he can't really do his usual tricks of arresting a few people, blackmailing a few people, like he would do to the Macedonian side. On the Albanian side... Uh, the tradition is that if you touch, if somebody touches into your family, uh, you know, machine guns are not far off. Yeah. I mean, yeah. uh, this is a, a common response when uh, somebody wrongs you in this horrific manner. And this is, you know, absolutely one of the worst things we've, we've mm. seen in, in the country. I mean, um, it, it really looked horrific. So you can imagine there were like 25 uh, patients in the hospital many of them unable to walk. Mm -hmm. And then for, um, they were, for months they were left without enough nurses. So they were told practically, even though this is a strict violation of every norm about treating corona patients, they were told you bring in family members who are vaccinated and they will run around and, you know, clean the bad pants and give them food and water because the uh, families would say, listen, our, our family members were left without water. They would just... Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it was horrific. They would die from hunger and first rather than uh, Corona. So on one hand, this helped when the fire started because the family members were here to help push some of the immobile people outside of the hospital. On the other mm -hmm. hand, it harmed because there were more people who needed to get out and maybe contributed to, the, to sparking the fire because more people m milling around, you know, more mm -hmm. flammable objects etc. And, you know, it, it was horrific. You could hear there, there was a video of the people screaming inside. It was really gruesome, you know, one of the a, a hor horrific way to go. And then after this happened, some of the initial people who spoke out 
uh, family members, they were apparently threatened by the government by doing. Uh, they, people would come out and say, listen, we were told to pay a bribe so that you know, our family members will be treated better, or we were told to stay there with the... Uh, we were told by the hospital staff to stay there, to send the f family member, and now everybody's denying that this was going on. And uh, so this was now, there was now a wave of reaction after a uh, family member spoke out, and then one of them changed the tune, so it really looked like they're being threatened by, by the Dewey party. So today we have a large protest aimed at the Dewey office in, in near Tetova, and the police had to be sent to try to protect uh, Dewey from the, from the anger of the citizens, because they are really fed up with... Uh, I mean, there's really no worse case of mistreatment of corruption and mismanagement of, of a public service than this. I mean, Titovo is a very badly run city, lacks water, even though it's underneath a huge mountain with a lot of springs. Uh, it's dirty, it's over buildings, it's uh, you know, narrow streets. It's really a horrifically badly run city. But you know, nothing compares to... To, to this disaster that that happened. That that is just incredible, and I think um, you refer to the death threats. There was, as I understand it, <clears throat> one of the uh, organizers of the protests. It was his father and brother mm. who were both in the hospital that died. And I think yeah. his brother was paralyzed, I yeah. believe. Uh, and he's the one who's been getting the death threats uh, for speaking. That that's just barbaric. Mm. It's barbaric. It is it is seventh century medieval uh, bar. Barbarity, yeah. uh, for for if if true, if if the if the party Dewey is in their their activists and thugs are are, are doing this, then that mm -hmm. is just absolutely barbaric. And it is it is to um, to borrow from uh, Zoran Zaev and um, his sidekick, or maybe it's his boss Ali Ahmeti. Mm -hmm. It certainly isn't the European way, is it? Uh, no. But uh, wow. Well, we'll we'll have to keep following these protests uh, again. You know, local elections, so the mayor, the council, uh, this is going to play into that a month away from today. Uh, we've seen in other countries where a some sort of disaster um, has happened and it's brought down the entire government. Uh, I don't think that's going to happen in this case, but it could bring down the, the government. It certainly will have political ramifications in, in Tetovo uh, and amongst the, uh, the eth Macedonia's ethnic Albanian parties. Uh, I think not just in Tetovo, but around country and that could affect uh given the agreements between citizen and, and uh, dewey that could affect uh, other races and other places as well i mean it uh, should by all rights uh, affect right. the government Vemer is calling for a vote of no confidence in uh, the healthcare minister Vinko philip who you know as we said even though macedonia is, is among the worst uh, in the world uh, statistics for uh, the death rate for you know, it was one of the last countries in the Balkans to receive vaccines after open corruption on the part of the minister. He was caught trying to position a, a phantom company registered in American Samoa, I think, to procure the vaccines mm -hmm. from China, which was the only country right. at the time offering vaccines. So they were the Chinese walked out of the deal, so the vaccines <laughs> arrived. <laughs> much after what does that tell you even when, yeah. what does that tell you when the, when even the chinese communist party yeah. backs out of a deal because the other party's too corrupt yeah too suspicious for them it was horrific so we didn't have the vaccines in time for the A march and april wave so it's a horribly run crisis but still the government invested heavily in promoting Vinko philip as a, a superstar politician and as i have promoted him as as his uh, deputy party leader but then uh in, in pr this particular case, so, you know, nobody's opposed to b quickly building, adding capacity. In one, some cases, they were using brick and mortar buildings, like clinics which are not used, like the uh, clinic, you know, eye clinic or you know, foot clinic, stuff, stuff like that. They would commandeer the building and uh, add capacity there. Uh, but okay, it's okay to build, I guess, uh, these uh, modular container uh, hospitals. But they gave the, the contract to Andushev, who, who was Zayev's deputy mm -hmm. prime minister. So obviously, <laughs> it's corrupt from the start. His company is uh, specialized in making uh, hospital beds. But he was part mm -hmm. of the deal with another company, which puts together the mod modular paneling. So 
he was obviously included in the contract. You know, he, he won the contract and then gave it to a company who actually works with this type of construction. And then, you know, people say that the, the hospital burned down within a minute, like five to ten minutes. minutes. Yeah. And we saw the pictures, yeah. the fire is spreading tremendously fast. And there were some guys then would go and, uh, you know, people who work in construction, they say, okay, listen, this is the difference. On, in my left hand, I have the isolation material, like uh, styrofoam, which goes in, in between the plastic <clears throat> to provide some insulation. Yeah, yeah the insulation. Yeah. yeah. On one hand, we have uh, type A, we have type B. Type A is cheap, type B is more expensive. Type A burns like uh, dried wood. Type B either self, either, uh, you know, stops burning after a while or doesn't even start burning uh, at all. Mm. So it's very clear they used the wrong type of paneling and then probably messed up the insulation to provide a spark. Uh, the, the 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 wiring to provide the spark that ignited the insulation. So uh, the only thing remaining now to be seen, it's not like Zaf is hiding behind these German experts. The only thing to see now is if the contract, and they're still hiding this, they're obscuring the, the facts, the basic facts of the case, whether there were the ministry asked for the inferior type of insulation to be used, in which case it will be Philip just fault for cost cutting in this way, or which I, you know, which, which, which is more hellish, more uh, despicable and more likely because of this. And I, I'm, I'm guessing this was the case. If the uh, contract material, uh, contract terms asked for the proper insulation to be used, and which is more expensive, yeah. so the <coughs> Andrushev's company, Zav's friend, can charge more, but then mm -hmm. still use the inferior type because, you know, this is how you make extra profit. Uh, sure. It's obvious that the, that the crap, crappy stuff was being used. So these are the two options. It's either Philips' fault for uh, contracting a company using uh, an, the inferior type or Andrushev's fault for saying, yes, sure, I will give you the, the good stuff and then making the, the um, a hospital out of uh, cardboard and, uh, you know, uh, bubble gum. I mean, it's, it's ridiculous. It's uh, horrible. Yeah. Let me, let me ask you this. Have the other, I guess, 18 uh, hospitals that are made of the similar material, yeah. have, have those been uh, checked and uh, examined? Uh, you can trust the investigation. The Office of State Prosecutor said we're investigating all of them, all the materials. Okay. The next okay. day they were forced to say, okay, but this is just the preliminary investigation. We're not saying that we have charged Philip or Zayef or anybody else. So they're being under enormous pressure because you can't imagine the amount of money which is now flowing through the healthcare system just for testing alone we're talking tens of billions these yeah. often go through like hospitals like uh, Sistina owned by coach uh, Orza Kamchev who was promptly arrested uh, you know a few months ago and uh, it's overt racketeering and extortion so there is a huge business developing here in masks yeah. in testing in, in treating the patients we're talking tens of millions, and the government mm. is overtly extorting the owners of the private hospitals who are providing these services. So, you know, you can absolutely imagine that they were cutting corners and they were trying to make as much money as possible. But also this makes Philip, people like Philip Cho very powerful because mm -hmm. he would take a cut from this. He's, uh, before the crisis, even before the crisis began, Vemera published that he, uh, accounts how he was extorting money from a dialysis provider, how he's mm -hmm. building a village, a literal village of villas in uh, a very expensive part of Skopje, together with a company which is a contractor to the ministry. So he's in a business deal with a person he's giving government contracts to. So he's a very corrupt person. The, another a person who actually guards the uh, financial uh, you know, flows in the ministry through the uh, FZO Public Health Healthcare Fund, who approves payments, etc., was Dan Donchev, uh, Zayev's friend, mm. uh, you know, our former friend, who fled the country after three years of plundering the, the system. You know, he was photographed, he was filmed stuffing money in a bag, and he fled back mm -hmm. to Australia. So this is an extremely corrupt system. Zayev is involved, and if these people talk, it goes straight to Zayev. So Zayev is not in a position to fire Philip. So he, 
has to be very careful how he approaches this deal because it's going to be a disaster for him. He, he cannot arrest anybody. Even people he, that were arrested for open corruption involving Zaev, like the racket trial, uh, Boki 13, he was photographed a few days ago walking through the I city. Saw that. Yeah. He's yeah. obviously, people are cutting deals with Zaev, telling him, give us more lenient terms or we'll tell on you. Uh, Zaev's uh, chief of staff, practically, Draghi Rashkovsky, I mean, actual mm -hmm. chief of staff, Draghi Rashkovsky, he is supposed to be in house arrest. He was photographed outside. And the worst case of all, of this complete collapse of the rule of law, we have Zuki Kichovets, uh, a mobster who was also arrested in the racket trial. But unlike Boki, he was more open to cut a deal with Zaev, not to incriminate Zaev directly. He helped cut short the, the trial because he made a plea deal, only three years in prison. And he was sent to an open style prison. Everybody would see him walking around the country, attending you know, parties, uh, practically running discotheques and clubs and etc. And uh, what was it, like 12 days ago, I think, uh, mm -hmm. he takes an expensive Mercedes SUV. He goes on this horrible mountainous road between uh, Gustiver and Kichova, which Bechtel is now supposed to build as a new highway uh, over. <laughs> he speeds at the norm, he goes at enormous speeds in, these are, this is like a, a ravine. This is like a, one small, one, one mistake and you're flying like, 100, 200 meters in the air. I've been on that road many times. Yeah. He crashes into, uh, he tries to overtake a car. He obviously hits a car directly going in the opposite direction. Like mm. it's, it's a free car pilot. Kills, uh, an, again, an Albanian person, father of two young, young men, driving in the opposite direction. So this is another problem Zaf is having with the Albanians. Uh, kills him instantly. And he was supposed to be in prison all this time. And he's out there joyriding, and uh, uh, he has two people from Serbia with him, obviously some type of mobsters. They are released back to Serbia immediately instead of being kept as accomplices or at least witnesses in the country. So it's a complete collapse of the, of the system. <coughs> and Zaev is now hostage to people like Filipča and Kičovets and Boki who know about his crimes, and he has to go out and explain and justify about them, and uh, he was out there justifying uh, Kichovets' release from prison. Uh, he was then out justifying Rashkovsky, the fact that Rashkovsky is not in house arrest. And worst of all, people ask him, it was yesterday, they asked him, are you going to assume responsibility for the, for the hospitals? I mean, you should resign too. You're the, during the college revolution, you insisted that the healthcare minister of that Griezka's healthcare minister is personally responsible if a very sick child, there was this tragic case they were exploiting in a gruesome way, if a very sick child dies because she was not given treatment in some German clinic fast enough, even though everybody said doctors here and abroad, it's inoperable. And, and they, they, you know, Zaev would latch on to these horrible cases like the uh, Good Friday massacre, like uh, the death of Nikola Mladenov's death the death of this kid, Martin Nishkovsky, etc. So they set the level so high for personal responsibility of the healthcare minister and the prime minister. And now journalists tell him, okay, are you going to resign? And he responded like in this almost drunken fashion, like slurring the speech, like, you can't touch me, you can't do nothing to me. Like, why should I resign? Like, so Mitskovsky would be prime minister? No way, I'm not going to resign. Like, it was horrible. It really looked ugly. It, mm. uh, it's... It, 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 it was really, like, for independence, it was really poison, a political poison for people who are not already bought and sold into the Zayev story. So, so what you're saying, <clears throat> Svetin, is that over the past 30 years, despite the billions of, well, I guess at the time, Deutschmarks and dollars and now euros oh. that have been spent and invested in Macedonia by the United States Department of State the European Union, the various member states of the European Union, NATO, and uh, not to mention the alphabet soup of international organizations mm -hmm. from the World Bank on down. What you're saying is, despite those billions, the rule of law still hasn't taken hold, and in fact, 
has gotten worse. But this but is beyond worse. The, much worse. But the reason that the internationals who claim to care about Macedonia and like to do their photo ops with the prime minister and others talking about how they've invested in the rule of law, the reason that they don't say a bloody thing about this is because they, because number one, Zayev has done their bidding. He has obeyed them like a good yeah. little boy. Uh, and they know that Macedonians are rightly very angry about all of this, about the corruption and about the fact that their, the name and identity was changed despite the fact that they didn't agree to it. Uh, and, and if Vomero comes back, the international community is going to, doesn't know what to do when Vomero gets up there and starts talking about, you know, the Republic of Macedonia. And I think that's about as simple as you can make it. And I think it's correct, that analysis. Uh, of course, it goes much deeper than that, but that's top level. And, and now you've got, as you mentioned, Zoran Zayev hostage to all of these people around him. Um, I, I guess the last thing to happen in a situation like this, because we've seen this in other countries around the world, the last thing, the next thing to happen is for people to start getting shot, assassinated. Yep. Because that's what comes next. Uh, next door, your next door neighbors, um, the Bulgarians, uh, it's 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 uh, leveled off there. But they had a, a yep. long spate of many years where they were just killing their oligarchs and political leaders and others. Uh, and same thing in Serbia as well and other countries. So I, I'm surprised, to be honest, that that hasn't happened yet. But um, well, listen, I, I mean. We'll see. Uh, this case, uh, Nikola Todorov, this despicable person who was healthcare minister mm -hmm. under Gruevsky, then switched sides, joined Zaev, uh, mm -hmm. who was so maligned by Zaev. Uh, he, was, he was called the Minister for Death, uh, right. uh, etc. They, they had a, a, a mob following him around and shouting at him, murderer, as he was walking around. And he's yeah. now on Zaev's side. And uh, they, they riled the, the people so much about over this case of this girl who died that her grandfather actually waited on Todorov the day when he was leaving the ministry and shot him, you know, fired at him, and missed him actually, shot two bullets at him and narrowly, narrowly missed him. And mm. this is orders of magnitude worse. So we have government corruption, so direct government involvement in this case, mm. inclusion of a crony developer in building these hospitals, mm -hmm. and uh, tragic loss of life in the most horrific way imaginable, the worst way to, to, to die. Yeah. And uh, as I said, it happens in an Albanian part of the country where, I mean, we've had vendetta killings for, uh, sure. we have them actually pretty frequently every few months, whether it's a mobster thing or an inter-family thing, like this Heathcliffs and McCoys, what was it in the US? It's Hatfields, still, McCoys. Yeah, it's yeah. still happening here. It's <clears throat> absolutely yeah. not out of this world that uh, that something that it like could this rise to the level of yeah. of the, uh, the 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 well known political leaders yeah it, it and and oligarchs as well it might happen no yeah, no it i can't say I, would I think, I think that's the next step. if somebody yeah. resorts to this i mean i wouldn't i i condemn yeah. it fully of course for, for yes. legal for legal purposes in this podcast absolutely <laughs> so but but i mean it, it it would be the natural progression i wouldn't yeah. i wouldn't be surprised yeah, yeah. Well, well let's let's kind of pivot a little bit from that really dark subject to something uh, a little less dark which is covid in general <laughs> <laughs> uh, you you mentioned earlier about the number of cases that were rising the number of deaths mm. that were rising especially in the summer and you gave the reasons for that etc of course you've got the vaccinations are there uh, macedonia was slow in its rollout because of as you mentioned vinko uh, flip chase incompetence uh, now, uh, people are still getting vaccinated, of course, but, you know, the, the, the number of vaccinations is, is the, the, the rise is decreasing, if that makes sense, if you can see a graph in your head. Oh, we're at uh, a plateau at the moment. Uh, yeah, okay. And, and now I understand, of course, and Macedonia has now, Macedonia is quite um, open, I suppose is the right word to, to put it, in, in terms of allowing people in during the worst last winter. Uh, you know, I was there in, in December, in the end of December, beginning of January, whereas I couldn't have gone to the European Union. Uh, and, and then I, this summer, and then I was there a few, what, a month ago or so. And I also went up to Estonia because I hadn't been able to get to Estonia for a long time. And I've got friends there. Mm. Now Estonia is closed. Macedonia is still open. But, 
Macedonia requires that you either have a proof of vaccination or a negative PCR test to get in. So I'm fully vaccinated. Mm. Uh, that's no problem. But I see now, Philip J., uh, which might be the title of this podcast at the rate we're going, is now requ- is thinking about requiring mandatory vaccination yep. for individual for individuals. Um, and and that of course that's a debate that is being raged in every country. You know, Joe Biden the other day just was uh, using the power of the administrative state, the deep Mm. state, the managerial state, whatever you want to call it, not even issuing an executive order as president, but but dodging, running behind the skirts of the what's called OSHA, the Occupational Safety and Health Administration, to issue a rule, an emergency rule that would require that employers with more than 100 employees have them vaccinated. Otherwise, there's a $14,000 per incident fine, Mm. which, you know, Probably is unconstitutional at the end of the day, um, but but that is that's he's not he because he can't require that all citizens in these United States of America get vaccinated. He's trying various other ways. But Philip J. now is talking openly about mandatory vaccination of everybody, yep. uh, and I don't know how that I don't, I don't think it would work. I mean, the, look. We as a human species, the only thing that we achieve 100% of is death. <laughs> death comes to all of us. Uh, that's just a fact. So I don't know how he's going to achieve mandatory vaccination of everybody in Macedonia. When, and how he's going to monitor that. So and broadly why, speaking, what's going... Yeah, why sorry. are they doing this? I mean, it's really well, a horrific yeah, totalitarian it, it, term you have over there. Yeah, well, and here's the other thing. The other debate that's being ignored that should be addressed is um, uh, natural immunity. So people that have had COVID, mm. and I don't know how many thousands, tens of thousands of people in Macedonia have had COVID already, uh, they've got immunity from it. And same thing here. And, 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 you know, the one thing that Dr. Anthony Fauci seems to not have an answer to, he seems to have an answer to everything, but when he's asked about mm. natural immunity, he says, you know, I really don't have an answer for that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm vaccinated as well. I'm not keen on... Yeah. Getting acquiring immunity by trying my luck with the, the virus Nat- the natural way. I will probably take the booster shot when it makes sense to do so. Like it's in another debate. Months. Yeah, but still, I mean, to go after people, to have them fired, to incite this uh, us versus them rhetoric, which in the mm-hmm. U.S. you're doing this between uh, mm-hmm. uh, the races and now between the vaxxed and unvaxxed, it's... Uh, I don't know what their game is trying to make. You know, we had a we had a, lo- a horrific situation with Afghanistan. So maybe make a bigger mess to distract the people from from this case of incompetence. Distract them with uh, by uh, going back to the us versus them uh, narrative. Maybe this is what they're doing. Uh, what Biden is doing here. We're having a lot of uh, distraction attempts. People. To get people not to talk about the uh, the fire, so we had uh, like uh, Vimmer people are openly saying that this was a planted document. We had another uh, memorandum about Bulgaria, but you know they're looking at it and it looks like it was written by a Macedonian, and it says that mm. if we accept this, you know we agree that we were Bulgarians and now we're Macedonians, and you know there was an attempt to have a debate over this. And Vimera people said, no, listen, you're trying to distract from the real issue. We've seen these documents. Uh, we know the Bulgarian demands. Don't try to change the subject. So today we have uh, an audio tape between Kitschovets, this guy who made this car, caused this car crash, and uh, his wife, who is an influencer, I think. And uh, She's a, is she a social media influencer? Yeah, well, you know, one of those, uh, you, you see the picture, you think it's photoshopped, and you pray it's photoshopped, but in her case, it isn't. <laughs> so she, the, in the tape, she says she was sleeping with Sasha Yalkov. so everybody now on the SDSM oh, side of the, of the social media debates, they're, they're quiet as a church mouse after the fire. People who were screaming at women are murderers, murderers, you killed this girl, you killed this dead journalist. They're now saying, let's wait for the investigation to be complete. We have German experts here. They're going to investigate the thing in full. Let's not point fingers at anybody before that. So, and then, and now they're, yeah. Go ahead. And now they're discussing, oh, look, did you hear this tape? Listen to this tape. Ignore the fact that there are, there is a near riot in, 
in Tito when our coalition partners HQ is about to burn down. So um, it might be a distraction, but here, uh, okay, we have uh, restrictions. You can't walk into a mall or into a cafe or a restaurant if you are unvaccinated. No, you so they cannot. Yeah. Yes. So what? So they've got people at the uh, uh, Scopia City. Sorry, Scopia City Mall. Um, yeah, you demanding can't go. to see your yeah, papers. Of course. Yes. Yes. There is oh my a guard, goodness. Yeah. Except it's yes. not enforced in uh, Tito and Gustavo. No, of course. In the West the of the rule country. The rule of law doesn't yeah. apply. Again, no. but like with the weddings. But I mean, okay, it's not something to, you know, some people are saying, oh, look, they get all the breaks. Yeah, they get the over the uh, COVID hospitals as well as a result of this. So never mind. It was a debate for a while. Yeah. Is it, you know, li lucky them they can get to, uh, avoid the law, ignore the law. But it's really not. Uh, uh, something to be envious of, but there is uh, so so this is a strong incitement for people to get vaccinated, and for a while it worked because mm -hmm. the numbers were bad, and then uh, Philip banned people from going into a restaurant, uh, or just having coffee outside without the uh, uh, vax passport. I, I guess a lot of people have fake documents because there is not a lot of talk about enforcement. Mm -hmm. We do not get these daily numbers of mm -hmm. people who were a uh, charge who were caught unvaccinated in a cafe and then find. So I, I'm guessing that people are skirting this a lot. But there is also, so this is one, uh, um, this is the, how the situation looks, but there is also an attempt by Philip Cho and the government to drum up something similar to your debate in the US, like this uneducated, irresponsible, right-wing, uh, <laughs> Yeah. Knuckle dragging, gun, yeah. gun loving, Bible toting, yeah. religious yeah. fanatics. Yeah, yeah. In there are several country. websites right. like uh, funded by Soros by USA who are focused exclusively on uh, going on Facebook and looking for Nicki Minaj comments on the vaccines, and then they would put them out yes. in a article like, "Look at this idiot! Look at that idiot!" There were several protests which ASDSM tried to pin on Vimera which directly tells you that mm -hmm. SDSM likely organized them. At the very least, SDSM infiltrated people. Could the organizers say, we didn't invite this guy, he comes on, starts talking, they're spraying us with, you know, vaccines made of radioactive, uh, baby fetus uh, cells, <laughs> etc. And, uh, yeah, well, they are. Of course, yes, of course they are. <laughs> you know that. And, uh, and then say, look, everybody on the Vimera side agrees with this lunatic. So there is a active attempt, obviously coordinated through the embassy, to copy the American narrative here. But I don't know. Somehow it's really not catching on. Uh, uh, people are concerned. I mean, even people on the SDSM side, I think, are not very happy with uh, with the vaccines and uh, not too eager to take to, to well, mock people who who would not take the vaccine. Yeah, I mean, this is this is a funny thing when it comes to the vaccines. I mean, it cuts every which way. Here, it's not just knuckle dragging, Trump loving, Bible Bible toting, gun loving, flyover MAGA uh, Republicans. Uh, you know, it's 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 also poor people yeah, people yeah. to use the phrase yeah. people of color. Um, you know, it's it's a lot of their side of the aisle. Uh, people that don't want them as well for a mm. whole variety of reasons. So it just cuts every which way, and it's the same thing in every country. There's no rhyme or reason to it. It's just you know, okay. and that's it's. Well, the, I guess the 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 one thread is that the elite. Mm. I'm using air quotes. In every country, are demanding fidelity yeah. to the system, uh, whatever system they come up with for, you know. For a variety of reasons. Some of it is they actually want people to get vaccinated, yeah. and I encourage people to get vaccinated. Um, some of it is control. Some of it is, you know, corruption. It's it's a whole variety of reasons. So uh, uh, in a, in Tito and Gustavo, we would have like the half of the vaccination rate we have in uh, a majority Macedonian part of the country. But uh, so, so like mm -hmm. similarly to like you would have in a minority neighborhood in the U.S. But the educated, the elites, the you know, our betters uh, in the U.S. They cannot tell you. <laughs> They cannot, they're not going to use this in their talking points. It's going to be a white 
southerner who is not vaccinated and they're gonna openly gloat over people this is the worst part they would gloat especially it's, if it's like, like a right-wing talk show host but even if it's a right-wing nobody mm -hmm. they gloated over people who posted a facebook comment i'm not putting this vaccine in my body and then died from covid in our right. case right. Um, we uh, the the left does not dare mention the fact that uh, the, this current wave is was all concentrated in the majority Albanian part of the country, and they would try to make up Mas ethnic Macedonian villains, but completely ignore the the location of the of the uh, epidemic. It's I don't know what's what what makes them do this. I mean, it's it's all political narrative. It's all going after your political opponents and uh, we're doing we're using covid to go after them even though it has zero grounding in in reality and the problem is elsewhere the, if you're really annoyed about the low vaccination rate you would uh, uh, discuss you would go elsewhere you would uh, point mm -hmm. your finger in, in in a different direction but you need their votes and you can't right. you're not allowed to. you're dependent on the on the albanian yeah. voters so yeah, it's all it's all and it's all tied in. It's all very incestuous uh, at the end of the day, unfortunately. Um, all right. Well, let's let's do this. It's uh, we, we want to talk about we, we touched on the elections. We'll we'll catch up with those in our next podcast. Uh, we've got the ongoing census. I don't know how many people have actually been counted so far, but I mean, that's the census itself has got a lot of problems in mm. terms of technical issues and plus the fact that they're counting people that aren't even yep. in the country which is the exact opposite of what the census is uh we got bulgaria of course bulgaria is going to have a third round of a, is it third or fourth now oh, yeah, third, really. i think a third round of elections in november <laughs> yeah. tied in for for parliament tied yeah. in with the presidential elections i believe uh meaning that uh you know even after those elections even if there's a conclusive winner uh it's going to be end of the year before they can find uh have proper government uh, and then of course you get into the christmas and new year's and mm. blah 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 so ain't no uh ain't no yeah, hope for macedonia yeah. on the eu front uh of course and I'm, I'm kind of rapidly going through a couple of issues here on the eu front uh, uh i see that the french are absolutely furious uh as the uh with uh, mm. the u.s and britain right now because of the new i guess it's 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 a very clever abbreviation the mm. AUKUS agreement between au uk us uh which has I mean, we're going far afield here which has everything to do with um uh british and american submarines in the in the uh, in, mm. in and around australia going near uh, china but anyway uh, all, all that to say that the uh, the French are, are furious with uh, the U.S., the U.K., which is not in the EU right now. Uh, but there's problems within the EU itself, uh, as we touched on in our podcast about Afghanistan. Uh, NATO allies are furious at the U.S. So all to say that it's just one big mm. hot mess uh, going on all over the place that, uh, you know, is uh, there's no real good news there. And, and we need to get back on our... Um, not this episode, but back on our positive uh, farmers' picks at some point here. Uh, nothing, nothing positive here. We had <laughs> it was supposed to be a positive thing. The parade on the on September eighth, thirty years of since Macedonia yeah. declared independence. It was depressing yeah. affair even before you know what happened in the end. Even before the fire, yeah. which broke out yeah. in the evening. So, but it was not. poignant that it happened at the moment because Zaf would not invite the opposition. It was all uh, yeah. party for uh, his people uh, sitting next to Pendarovsky and the Katsarska, the, the, his judge and henchman, henchwoman. Mm. And uh, they had a parade of this really meager, like a fire truck. Like we were joking, where is the garbage truck, <laughs> you know, for the parade? It's really <laughs> looked like uh, you're doing like a military style parade for, you don't have a military, you're a colony. Uh, practically under Greek American yeah. occupation, and uh, like a flyover with uh, training planes, like it is used to to teach you how to fly, like um, one step removed, yeah, yeah one step removed from a, a farming, you know, like spraying uh, pesticide spraying plane. <laughs> yeah. Old biplane. Then after that, yeah. we played uh, Romania. We had a good shot at uh, 
in the qualifying now for the World Cup. We couldn't score. We were attacking them all for 90 minutes. We can't score. Everybody is super depressed. Like, like look what a stupid country we are. Look at Zaf doing a parade. And then we can't even beat a, a, a team. We are obviously out outclassing, and, but we can't score for the life of us. Mm -hmm. And then you, you turn on the Twitter machine after the game and you see, oh, fuck, this is really... So it's it's really it could have been like one positive thing to happen to us and then it's mm -hmm. uh, it all exploded. Uh, so yeah, it, it's uh, the worst possible 30th anniversary of independence, but also you know like a reminder that something needs to change. That this can't go on like this. Definitely yes, uh, it, it needs to change. I guess the other reminder is you know. The classic line: "This too shall yeah. pass," uh, which is always true. Of course, of course, something else, something worse <laughs> might come, <laughs> but something better might come too. But you know, I guess let's let's leave it with this. I mean, you know, again, at the end of the day, Macedonians have responsibility for their own future, despite all the interference from the Europe, from the European Union, from NATO, from the U.S. State Department, and others. Ultimately, uh, and, and, or Macedonia's mm -hmm. neighbors. Uh, ultimately, Macedonians have their fate in their own hands. They can turn yeah. it around. They have the ability to do that. It's just a question of, of do they have the will? Uh, and um, why, don't we, why don't we leave it at that and, and revisit that? Uh, yeah, I have podcast. nothing smart to add. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We will uh, we'll catch you up on the next one. All right, buddy. Take care.